Hi guys, we're Bradance. We've remixed Collective Terms Tracer, collaborated with Groove Armada, uh, remixed Alex Arnell. Today we'll be remixing Emerson Todd on a package with Sasha Dive and Nathan Barato, which we put on our own label Dance Club Records. Uh, our most recent EP featured Carrie Golden, who we've worked with on a number of occasions, and that EP has received support from Lauren Garnier, Joris Vaughan, and Kate Simcoe. Uh, and we run the label Dance Club Records. Yeah, which is home to uh, names like Oliver Dollar, uh, Marcus Hom, Sasha Dive, Nathan Barato, Emerson Todd, uh, Drew Hill, uh, ourselves, and a whole list of art other artists. Right, so we're going to show you our uh, remix that we're working on at the moment of Emerson Todd. And this will come out on Dance Club Records with uh, Sasha Dive and Nathan Barato also on the package. So just to, I think we might as well show the, very quickly, the original. So one of the reasons we really like this record for the label is thought it did have big possibility for some great remixes which now come in and uh, ours is going to be the final one on the package so that's what we'll show you today. This one's quite deep, we want to make ours a little bit more club ready didn't we, a little bit more a bit heavier. Right so we received these parts um, so you put Okay, and then we selected the ones that we thought we could probably do something with, and they were the vocal. Um, the yeah, vocal was really the main thing for us because we wanted to make it quite or put our own stamp on it, really. So, yeah, um, and then we've sampled a part of the vocal as well and turned it into a bit of a perk kind of sound so that it's sort of unrecognisable as a vocal, but it you'll, we'll show you the process that we went through for that one shortly. Just to confirm what we've used mostly, for, I mean for the drums uh, we use the TR8, if you're not familiar this emulates the 808 and the 909, we use this in all of our stuff uh, for quite a while now, what else are we using this? Yeah so we all, our, all our drum tracks, so uh, kick drum, uh, we've got a clav on the on the rim shot but it's the yeah it's one of the instruments not the standard 909 uh, we use the closed hi-hat open hi-hat and the rides for this one uh, quite simple quite basic so what we would do is program the pattern into the TR8 sort of on the fly and live and then record each track separately into the computer and you can see that here and on there at the moment uh, we've got just a tube uh, dynamic tube uh, with a little pushed a little bit and just an EQ8 just sort of pushing up those the mid range um, so for this one uh, we didn't use the snare out of the TR8 this is actually just a sampler uh, which is but what's worth saying now is that the what we'll show you is the the snare if you like is actually become really the hook of this track so it starts off with this clap and then we'll show you what we've done to it and really makes the track actually there we go. that's what I was saying before about turning the vocal into a almost percussion and basically it's <coughs> So on its own, it's and then turned it into this sort of perk sound. So on that vocal perk, there is sort of, I've got a low pass 12 uh, on sort of set to about half, uh, full resonance, uh, and then it's just sort of a little bit of decay just so it's kind of it's quite a sharp sound uh, and then giving it a little bit with saturator 
a little bit of EQ on it. And perhaps that went a bit too far, but we've, we thought this was quite quite sort of the right area for it. And then together on the top. And then it's almost like Austin said, it's become the sort of almost like a little bit like the hook of the trap because you can you yeah, it's can one really it stands out doesn't it yeah when you when you recall it so track with that snare so on the snare drum um for here we've got it's actually it's just a sample I think it is worth saying to everyone that you know we do get a lot of stuff out of Ableton itself. And, you know, we don't necessarily need to have all the equipment. There's a huge amount in there, isn't there? Yeah. That we always you know use and go to. Yeah, so we, we we like this, but if you wanted to use the one that already comes with Ableton, yeah, I mean, definitely there's definitely enough there, isn't there? We kind of quite like the hands-on control that you have with this. Opposed to dragging a mouse around, it can get a bit tedious after a while. Um, so with this clap here, there's just uh, sort of got the decay. There you go. Uh, one sort of like three quarters of the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's it really on that. Um, got a little compressor, just sort of. It's not really doing too much actually at the moment. Uh, and then we've just low cut sort of anything look, anything below two three six just so it's just get rid of the muddy anything underneath and then the give it some space in, in yeah. this mix and then it just sits nicely on that kick drum so just quite tight to it So at the moment on the to start up we have a uh, kick drum, uh, snare, closed hi hat which is from here, uh, a tom which is hitting every sort of I think it's That's sort of at the end of every uh, I think is it two bars is it yeah let's just solo that and just play that so we got just this and then the slightly altered pattern. I've got this, I've got a sample pack, Trap Team Audio, uh, it's called Conga Heel, and then it's just... So it's just, that that's the original sample, but what we've done is just whacked a load of distortion on it. Let me just get rid of these, actually. Okay, so basically it's just that with a lot of distortion just flick off and on so without it you've got this it just gives out a little bit more yeah, and then yeah a little bit of character i suppose okay and that rolls at the round of end of every uh two bars and then just gives a nice little groove at the, sort of as it rolls round yeah this reverse sound here which is uh, runs through most of the track is just a reverse uh, reverb on a clap which we used in an existing track but we brought it over to this one and we thought it sounded well I thought it fitted quite well so together with a few of the elements That's the sort of, they're the parts for the sort of first, uh, with of course a close hi hat, so let's play it from yeah, there. The first eight bars. Uh, so all this, this here with a close hi hat, just a really simple one on the down, uh, one on the up, and just a tiny little roll uh, part way through the bar. That came out of here, of course, out of the TR8. Okay, on the uh, closed hi hat uh, pattern which we recorded from here, 
Uh, on the TR8, there's actually, it's called shuffle, which is your swing function. Okay, so the process was on the up is full velocity, and then with this, if you press the close part, you drop it on, you get reduced velocity, and then I think it was. Okay, and that's quite straight at the moment there, but when you start to shuffle it, you get that nice bit of swing. I mean, it's actually a long instrument. That's basically it, and then you can you can swing it quite a lot, but then you start to lose. We really like adding quite a lot of swing to our stuff, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, it just gives it that sort of human feel. Give it the groove as well. Yeah, um, it's all about the groove. So we recorded that in, uh, and then we go back to here, and it becomes. Yeah, usually we most things that we do are slightly shuffled uh, to a sixteen C or sixteen D swing, uh, and we help. We think it just helps to give the track a bit of feel, a bit of movement. So on the hi-hat channel, um, which is both closed and open on the same channel, uh, it just switches between the two. Uh, or when it, as the track goes on, it does switch to an open hi-hat and doesn't, they don't overlap, which was something that we used to do a long time ago, but what we'd now do is basically just switch to a new instrument, like a new hi-hat. Uh, and then on this one, there is no processing on this. We thought it sounded quite good out of the TR8. Uh, and here we've got just a send track set to about, what is it, about three quarters? Three. Yeah, three quarters. And all that's doing is it's sending it to my A send here, which is just a small. together or just on its own is so if I push it so you can hear the a bit too much I'm just go back down and then on the B similar but it's for a bigger reverb but that's not on this one at the moment um, and it just helps to give it a little bit of a feel as it fits in in the sort of same room as all the other instruments and kind of helps to sort of yeah, give it a bit of atmosphere and not not so dry and unprocessed. Next sound we've got coming in is a clav uh, or clave, I think it is. Maybe a sound coming in, which is from here as well. So it's just a tiny little kind of nice, nice small fill, uh, and that has again one of my s the sends, which is so three quarters on the A to the small one. And then about halfway, just under halfway on the B, so you get that nice little tail. There's, there's three sends. Uh, a for us is small reverb, so small room. B is quite, there's quite a lot of uh, decay time on it. The room size is big, and yeah, it's it's just to, yeah, when we want to sort of give it that big, big feel, and maybe sort of building sounds up and, or, before like a drop or something like that. Um, so that's just sitting on the cloud at the moment. It helps to give it a bit of yeah, a bit of feeling. So like one thing we're doing here with the on the masters, the EQ, we like this little trick quite a lot. And we'll just old school techno style roll off the bass. back in, you will just, just watch it.
master the we help like we, we think sort of the EQ on the master it just it just does the whole thing rather than a lot of other a lot of processes on because you could you could do the same on a on the bass and on the kick drum but it might I don't know it's just a lot it's easier if you just put it on the master and uh, also gives it like, like that old school feel where perhaps you didn't where you had more limitations and there's only so much you could do yeah and I think it's like a nice sound you know I don't it's not the only way to do it but it's a nice nice effect especially as it rolls back in yeah I always like that <laughs> so there's our bass line here which uh, we with the for us the bass lines are usually uh, well, they really are. They carry our tracks. It's the main. It's one of the main things for us. It's one thing we focus quite a lot on and make sure it's right with all of our tracks. Is because it's so important. Yeah, and Jerry tends to be quite subby bass lines yeah. as well. Um, yeah, because uh, in in the clubs, it's you hear that and a kick drum mostly. Yeah. That's what you feel. That's what you mostly your ears are hearing, and this is where our music, I think, should be played. Is in the loud nightclub, so it's yeah, a big thing for us was going to the clubs a lot, a lot, and really listening to tracks and seeing what works, hearing what works. And Scott says we came back, and you know, and we, it really is about that bass line and that kick in there, isn't it? You know, you know room one in fabric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that when when that's what we do. We sort of we've got a, there's a video online of uh, I think it's, yeah, it's the room one in fabric, and we just. You, on YouTube, you mute the mute the YouTube video and play your track over the top of it. And if you can sort of immerse yourself and think if that's going to be played in that room and that's what it's going to look like and you kind of imagine what it's going to sound like, it helps to give you a sort of good feeling of how it's going to translate. And that's It's quite a, I don't know, silly way of doing it, but it seems to, it seems to, seems to work. work. It seems to give us a good sort of, see if we're on the right path. So, for our bass lines, usually we use the mini group, which uh, is over there, and at the moment we've got our MIDI pattern, which is very simple, two notes, uh, and all that is doing is running the external instrument, so I've got uh, MIDI port 1, channel 1, uh, audio in 7, which is coming into here. And then that is Show. channel setting. Yeah, on here we've got a sheet that tells us which is because we've got seven out of all things, which sometimes it's hard to remember. So it's good tip to just sort of, if you have this kind of amount, is just to sort of write down just so it's like a quick go to. Yeah. Um, so back to the base, there's simple MIDI pattern uh, which we wrote. And that. and that was record, so it set up a new audio channel with the input from 7 and this, uh, and this uh, you've got this. And then after that, so we've got on it and it's just it's slightly driven it just a little bit of distortion just so it's kind of a little bit grippy I suppose and then side chain it with the kick uh, when the kicks on uh, so all it's doing is just standard side chain and just ducking it underneath those kick drums and together uh, when it's all played at the same time. It's hard to feel this one, isn't it? That bass, that subby bass. That is the recorded audio. So that's that. Okay, so that's sort of like the first kind of minute coming in and then I suppose that the next element to come in would be when do we bring the we bring the hats in once the bass rolls back on don't we let's just no. check no they're a bit after no this uh, right so 
we, we, it's quite nice now. I found we found to ourselves anyway to bring in the open hats a little bit later, and I suppose hold them back because it really creates that when you, you really notice them when they've not been there for a while, don't you? You know, if it's like say, two minutes into the track and it steps up. And yeah, exactly. It steps it up. So it, I suppose it's a bit of a an arrangement technique is waiting for them as you know sometimes we like to throw them in straight at the beginning but this is nice yeah you notice a big difference but first i suppose is the shaker that we i mean this is really prominent in the track well the, foot, well, the next bit up is the oh, of course the vocal so here as you can see that master channel eq gets brought up for a little bit of a break but everything's still there and then the vocal comes in and it's coming out of a low pass filter so additional shaker which the only thing on there at the moment is a compressor which has uh, is side chained against the kick and all that does is just helps to give the shaker a bit of pump and really a little bit more know. yeah it just pops through and it just gives it that little bit of adds to the groove as you say um, so if you just if we go on to the One of them was a little bit of editing on the audio of the kick drum uh, and all that is is just picking up sort of the beginning of one of the kick drums and just moving it along and all it does is it just adds like a little roll as it comes back in and you'll be able to hear it as it's... And it's just this, sometimes the small details like that which yeah. help to sort of uh, bring a track. Yeah, it's just yeah, that that little, those little details, those tiny little uh, transitions that help to give a track a bit of life when maybe your elements or you like to have your music quite stripped back to sort of affect what you have. And really work those yeah. instruments as much as you can. Yeah. Sorry, that's all we got time for. If you want to see more though, uh, check out the latest edition of Computer Music. And if you see Scott on Tinder, swipe to the right. <laughs>